Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another brand new figure that has just released. This is the Eofauna Diplodocus. What's great about this is we don't get Eofauna figures very often. Seems like we get like maybe one to two, sometimes if we're lucky, maybe three a year, but... At this point, they don't really have all that many figures out. I'm thinking maybe we'll get three this year because it's pretty early on into the year and we already have this and one other that's about to go up for review here on the channel as well. But the Diplodocus here, again, is the only dinosaur as of right now that they've announced for this year. And man, is this thing ever a beauty. Like, looking at this, I'm pretty confident when I say this is probably my new favorite Diplodocus. The sculpt is beautiful. The paint job is beautiful. And I love that the paint job isn't like a standard dinosaur type look where you just have like, you know, stripes running down the back or something. Like, it's pretty unique looking as we have like this nice light brown for the first half of the body. Then the darker brown overtakes the body for like the second half for a period of time and then we kind of have a mixture of both of those browns near the end of the dinosaur and it is exceptionally long like look at how long the tail is the tail is huge on this diplodocus so without question one of the more impressive dinosaur models i've seen in quite some time so let's go ahead jump straight to a closer look at this right now so starting up here at the head sculpt of the diplodocus the head sculpt is beautiful and one thing that i really love about this figure is that they've used some really nice washes on the figure some really nice dark washes to really highlight the detail and I think they've done an excellent job of doing just that. As you can see we have some beautiful skin texture in the face as well as quite a bit of different varying browns up here in the face. As we have kind of like a darker brown here near the mouth that kind of transitions up but you see it mixing really nicely with that lighter brown throughout. The darker brown kind of acts as a wash on the figure. And then you can also see like some light kind of off whites or like light grays picking up down here in the lower part of the jaw. You can also see the mouth is open and you have some nice pinkish tones it looks like in there. Kind of looks like we have the tongue but it's a little hard to see. You can see the nostrils on the dinosaur. The eye is painted beautifully as we have a nice orangish tone of color and a black pupil. You see more of that dark brown picking up here on the top of the head as well. Some beautiful creasing in the neck as we have a turn in the head and neck region of our diplodocus as you start to run back here into the neck you can kind of see like some tensing in the neck as well as those ridges running along the back of the diplodocus you can also kind of see like certain areas kind of have like that kind of like a khaki color sort of showing up here on the top running along the ridge line of the dinosaur but as you move down the course of the neck you can again see the nice light brown as well as that darker brown wash and you start to get some designing here kind of like some striping with what appears to kind of be like a light gray similar to what we saw in the face and as you move down the neck you can see it starts out kind of small but then starts to become pretty big as far as the striping goes that runs down from the upper side all the way down through the course of the neck and I think that was pretty neat. A nice little addition as far as the coloration goes. Adds a little bit more flashiness to the figure. Whereas the majority of the figure doesn't really have much of a flashy look color wise. But this area here kind of adds a little hint of flashiness to it. You can again continue to see how those ridges run down along the spinal column. We also have kind of like some rows of osteoderms pretty much littering the side of the diplodocus. As you lead down here you can see some nice skin wrinkles right there at the base of the neck attaching to the body. You can see the shoulder blade very nicely elaborated there within the skin and you start to see that darker brown kind of overtake the body. You can also see kind of an even darker brown or maybe even bordering on almost like a very dark gray or a black kind of spotting and stuff throughout which looks really cool. As you lead down the front of the leg you can see a gorgeous looking very majestic looking leg sculpt right there. If we can go ahead and get a look from the front, you've got that classic Diplodocus nail right there. And you can also again see that the brown kind of meshes as we have the lighter and darker brown in the leg as well. But the darker brown is way more abundant than the lighter brown down here. As you move up into the stomach region, you can get a great idea of how nice the scale detail looks. Of course, the dark wash helps to show that off, but it looks really, really nice, really vibrant on the figure. You've got a bunch of skin wrinkles and stuff down here in the lower part of the stomach. You can kind of see the skin stretching off of the stomach here as that leg is trailing there, stretching the skin, which also looks really quite nice. And again, you can see quite a bit of different variation of color as we have like the lighter brown kind of mixing with the darker brown, but then it becomes more abundant up here as far as the darker brown because we also have like some darker brown spots and stuff like there's quite a bit of color that eofauna has included on this figure which really helps to add a nice element of realism to the figure 
You can also see the underside sports some very nice skin texture as well as a lighter coloration, kind of like a light brown here for the underside. Also has been hit with that nice darker wash, which really highlights the detail down here as well. You can see some pretty good girth in the stomach region as well for the Diplodocus, so it looks nice and well fed. You can see as we come back up toward the top, we transition back to that lighter brown, but we also again have kind of like some uh, even lighter browns or like khakis running along the top of the figure. And you can see that color specifically there where you look at the ridges kind of running along the top of the dinosaur. The tips of the ridges kind of have that darker brown, but then the rest of the ridge leading down to the body has like that lighter kind of khaki color. As you lead back here, you can continue to see again that we have those osteoderms littering the dinosaur. The osteoderms are kind of highlighted with the darker brown as well. But then as we lead down here into the thigh, you can see that the thigh does have some pretty nice muscle definition. Again, quite a bit of different mixtures of colors. Leading down into the leg, you can see this foot is just picking up off of the ground as the dinosaur is walking along. Pretty nicely sculpted, pretty nicely painted foot as we have some really nice nail paint. And you can see the toes and everything look great, kind of like a curve in the toe and everything as the foot is lifting up off of the ground. As you lead back up here, you have a lot of skin wrinkles and stuff right there behind the thigh. And then we continue to move out the length of the exceptionally long tail. And you can see here now we have like the lighter brown and the darker brown. And they all kind of like run together as we lead out the length of the tail. The ridges, again, as you look along the back, they kind of decrease, then increase, then decrease, then increase in size. Through the course of the figure, it looks really cool. And as you move out the length of the tail, for the most part, we have a slight curve, but it's not all that dramatic of a curve until we reach the end of the tail. And as you lead out here, you can really see a very, very strong curve, kind of that whip-like look to the tail, something that we are all very accustomed to when it comes to Diplodocus. We have, again, that absolutely massive tail. The entire underside also, again, supports some fantastic detail with some beautiful paintwork all really nicely brought out with that dark wash. You can see the cloaca is present here on the underside. So we have an incredibly realistic look for the dinosaur. And then if we get these out of the way and we take a look at the figure over here, you can see the beautiful head sculpt there as we lead along the neck. You see more really nice paintwork against a nice kind of skin wrinkle, skin creases and everything there in the neck region. We start to pick up that striping effect running down the neck and then of course they increase in size quite drastically as you lead down into the body. The paintwork looks pretty much the same over here as it did on the initial side which means it's beautiful on both sides you can see as well as we transition to the darker brown again down here in the body lots of really nice skin wrinkles right here behind the leg because this leg's trailing a little bit creating all of those skin wrinkles so very nice attention to detail you can see this foot is planted but kind of looks like it's about to leave the ground while this foot is about to hit the ground again showing off the walking aspect of the dinosaur more skin wrinkles and stuff throughout this leg as well as leading on this side creating some nice skin wrinkles right there which is also shown off beautifully in the sculpt the detailing here in the stomach region again looks fantastic we have those osteoderms pretty much everywhere and that dark wash just really amps up the paint job of this figure so much as you lead back here, you can see the nice structure of the leg, the nice muscle definition. Almost looks like there's kind of like some saggy skin back here a little bit. And then you again have the really nice foot sculpt down here. This foot is 100% planted on the ground, supporting quite a bit of weight of the dinosaur. So you can kind of see how it's tensing very nicely. And then you can see some skin stretching here off of the tail as the dinosaur again walks along. And then we lead out that exceptionally long tail. You can see we have like some really dark brown stripes running here along the length of the tail that kind of turns into like some spotting before the tail completely turns back to that lighter brown that we see on the upper side of the dinosaur with that really nice whip-like finish to the tail. So definitely one of the nicest, if not the nicest, Diplodocus that I've ever seen. And in my opinion, my new favorite Diplodocus in my collection. This thing is just absolutely beautiful with one of the nicest, most realistic, I think, looking paint jobs when it comes to what you would like to see on a sauropod. Eofauna has completely nailed it here. Included with our Diplodocus, we also have a beautiful image here kind of showing the Diplodocus off. Some beautiful, beautiful paleo art right there. And then as we move down, you've got some really cool stats on your Diplodocus. And then if you turn it around, you've got the Eofauna logo. And then you also have this little sort of like a booklet here, again, showing off Eofauna, a really nice silhouette of the Diplodocus, the title of the species, as well as showing off the fact that it is 140th scale. And then if we open this up, if I can figure out how to open it up, there we go. We can kind of do that. 
you can see the inside shows off all sorts of information on the dinosaur, which is, you know, nice to be able to learn about the dinosaur on top of getting an incredible, incredible model. As far as a size goes, we'll go ahead and head up here to the head and we'll start back there at the tail. Actually, you know what? We're going to reverse this because the tail being so thin at the end is probably really flexible. So we'll start here at the head and end at the tail. You are looking at about 24 almost 24 and a half inches, I would say, a little over 24 and a quarter and approaching 24 and a half inches or around 62 centimeters. So definitely a very, very long figure. And then as far as a height goes to the top of the neck, I would say it's probably around the highest point. You're looking at a little over three and a half inches or just a hair over nine centimeters for a size comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus and robert muldoon from the mattel jurassic world toy line next to our diplodocus and you can see that although it sports a really really impressive length the overall body mass isn't as large as some other sauropods are but considering it's diplodocus like it's a longer dinosaur it's 100 percent expected to have a size i think like this in my opinion this is actually a little bit larger than i was expecting so that is definitely a plus but you can see that again although it's not massive it still sports a pretty good size and then for another size comparison we have what definitely is another of my favorite all-time diplodocus figures as we have the safari ltd carnegie collection diplodocus which is absolutely huge as well but you can again see that the eel fauna version is actually a little bit longer than the Carnegie version but the Carnegie version just in general has a larger size regardless I think this shows that the Eofana version as well does sport a pretty impressive size and then when it comes to another sauropod here is the old Schleich Saltosaurus a figure that I felt like would be a pretty fun one for a comparison also again showing you that the Diplodocus is quite huge then we have the Schleich Apatosaurus here next to the Diplodocus again showing that there is remotely no competition when it comes to a length but body mass maybe a little bit larger on the apatosaurus but still not too far off and then for another really cool comparison we have the pnso allosaurus next to our eofauna diplodocus one that i think is a pretty fun comparison to pull out and show off next to each other although i think it's pretty clear they're not quite to scale with each other but still a pretty fun one and then when it comes to eofauna figures there is the eofauna triceratops next to the diplodocus also showing you that the triceratops definitely sports a pretty good size and then the final comparison i have would be the eofauna let's find a good spot for this one there we go the eofauna atlasaurus which you can see is quite a bit taller than our diplodocus but another gorgeous sauropod figure i think at this point it's pretty safe to say that eofauna makes some of the nicest sauropods out there as both of these are really high up on my list of favorites in my collection so this brand new eofauna diplodocus is absolutely beautiful definitely one of the nicest dinosaur models to grace my review station in some time the sculpt is fantastic looking absolutely majestic in every way just walking along a nice big version of a sauropod a nice big version of a diplodocus specifically and again i really love the overall appearance for the dinosaur with a nice slight turn in the neck that really nice whip like tail and i love that they've perfectly captured the whip like appearance to the end of the tail with the curves and everything on it the sculpt as a whole again sports every ounce of fine detail you would expect really nice skin wrinkles skin stretching some areas where you'd see some of the bone structure like the shoulder blade elaborating muscle definition everything is very nicely done as far as the sculpt goes and the paint job as well is incredibly nice if you ask me i absolutely love what we see here they've done a great job of applying some really nice washes and everything through the course of the entire figure to make it look extremely lifelike very nice very appealing many different tones of color used as well so it has a very nice realistic look as far as skin tone goes and i like the the paint scheme they've come up with because it's not overly flashy i wouldn't really expect a sauropod to be too flashy and it looks again pretty much like what i would expect darker tones but it's not boring like it has a really cool look to it as far as the coloration goes so they've done a fantastic job on the sculpt and the paint job and i think the size is pretty much perfect and very impressive when it comes to a length which you would again expect being a diplodocus definitely one of my favorite sauropods there is no doubt about that so if 
of you are interested in picking this up, I will include a link in the description to where you can do that on Dan's Dinosaurs. That is where I purchased mine. That's where I recommend you purchasing yours. So make sure you check the link in the description. Head on over to Dan's right now. Pick yourself up this fantastic Diplodocus and like, comment, and subscribe before you do. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.